What's up, Shorts Force? Welcome back to the channel. Wow, um, what an absolute cluster, fill in the blank. Um, it's good to be back, though. I uh, hope you guys weren't too worried. I appreciate all of you checking in with me, phone calls, text messages, uh, hitting me up through social media. It was, it was absolutely nuts this last week. And I'm just going to kind of share with you like the whole experience from start to yesterday and uh, walk you through it. So um, I, I got my dogs out here playing um, since there's finally no more snow on the ground or ice. Um, so I'm just kind of giving them some time to enjoy it. But man, this is like unprecedented. So I know a lot of you guys and gals out there are probably wondering like, why was it such a big deal if it wasn't really that much? snow and ice going on like in the state like i even got comments people are like, curious like legitimately curious like how does that happen we get snow all the time we get ice freezing all that um so here in texas like it's really not common like at least in san antonio and surrounding counties um it's really not that common especially further south so on occasion we might get some freezing um, some ice you know over the the roads and stuff um on rare occasion we'll get snow like in the hill country or kind of outside the city um, and even i think it was like 2016 there was like a small amount of snow but normally the temperatures dip just enough for it to snow and then the next day or two days after they're right back up and everything melts away but that wasn't the case here and there was no like heads up or warning and i think that's what made it so much worse the situation because i remember like saturday uh, Friday, Saturday, like people are preparing for Valentine's on Sunday, you know, getting their dinners and stuff ready or whatever. They're uh, just kind of preparing for what they're going to do, right? So the stores were kind of uh, full, but, you know, maybe some people were buying in preparation of just what if or just in case it snows or it freezes. Um, I remember even like with work, some places were telling employees like, hey, come in late Monday. We're going to do like a late opening on Monday. But they weren't shutting stuff down on Saturday or Sunday even. Now, Sunday evening, it started to snow late at night, uh, probably around 9 or 10 p.m., started to actually snow, and it was coming down pretty good. Uh, so everyone was like excited, hey, you know, we're getting snow, it's awesome. And then an email went out from CPS, which is the energy company here in town, and they were saying that uh, due to the freezing and stuff going on throughout the area and the state, they were gonna be doing rolling blackouts. Um, so basically just giving a heads up, hey, power might be coming on and, and off. Okay, that, you know, whatever, like, no one was really concerned about it at that point. And it wasn't until Monday, early Monday morning, so after Sunday night, it snows, Monday morning around, I want to say as early as maybe 2 or 3 a.m., the power started to cut off, pretty much like on the hour. So they were doing rolling blackouts because it would be off for, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes and then back on the rest of the hour, and then on the hour, it shut off again and I was getting text messages from friends and family, and so they were kind of experiencing similar things, but not everyone was getting the same rolling schedule. And I was keeping in touch, so the next morning, which was Monday morning, I was just um, chatting with you know relatives, and I had no, so the power was pretty much going off and on. Um, there was no internet here. The cell phone signal was really bad. Text messages weren't going out. Some weren't coming in. Calls were getting dropped, so it was pretty, um, crappy cell phone service and I pretty much couldn't use the internet at all and I know I dropped my video Monday because I had it pre-recorded and set to release Monday morning and I was trying to read comments and the weirdest thing is like when I would get internet through the cell phone I could see like the notifications but as soon as I tried to open the apps or actually go and respond I just couldn't um, and so you know, I told my wife like well we'll just you know roll through it whatever but it was actually really cold outside. So I want to say the temperatures got down to like 16 degrees on, uh, it was like in the 20s on Sunday and Monday it was going to get down to nine degrees. And this is all Fahrenheit. Um, but we were kind of getting concerned because the power was starting to cut off more often. And by the time it would turn back on, the heater for the house wasn't really doing much to bring the temperature up. Even you try and turn it up and then the power would cut off. So pretty much the house temperature started to, to slowly drop. And we have pretty good insulation on this house um, and it was still dropping quite a bit. And so I was texting uh, my mom, she was staying with my grandpa and he's 91. I'm like, hey, is the power come on? Like for us, nope, it was pretty much out, not coming back on. And then you started worrying because people were talking about how their power wasn't coming back on. So through the night, um, Monday, it was like, people were starting to kind of get concerned because the power wasn't coming back on for a lot of us. And then there were some people that lost no power. 
So my sister, her power never went out the whole week. It just stayed on the entire time, um, never lost water. My uncle, he lives on the south part of town and his power never cut off. And I think part of it is because he was on a part of the grid where you could see a hospital like from his apartment complex, you could look out and see a hospital there. And so they weren't shutting down portions of that, I guess the grid where um, hospitals, um, some grocery stores, uh, police stations, fire stations, stuff like that, we're still getting power. So if you were close by or on that same, I guess, grid, I'm not really sure how that works. So, but part of the problem was the freezing and everything was occurring throughout Texas, even further, further south than we are. And so you had these temperatures sustained for multiple days. Further north Texas, they're kind of used to it, but here in this area, it's really, really rare. And so nothing was really winterized or done. Um, I think ERCOT, the private company that deals with taking care of all of the uh, power lines and grids and stuff, they failed to do like antifreeze and um, upgrading the upgrading the lines and the grid itself and all the, the I guess like the transformers and the generators and everything. So they had dropped the ball there. They pretty much amp up everything for summertime because that's when everyone's using air conditioning but they didn't do that for these kind of rare winter freezes. So that just compounded the problem. Um, again, when it was snowing and icing over, you know, the trees in this part of the country, like the weight from all the snow and ice breaks tree limbs, they hit power lines. So now that goes down. It's just a lot of stuff, a lot of things compacting it. And then you have on top of that, people that aren't doing things like dripping their water lines. Um, I was driving through my neighborhood and like pretty, I would say like maybe half of these houses didn't even wrap their pipes outside, which is just crazy to me. Uh, maybe not half, let's say a third, like a third of the ones I've seen. And then maybe it's just they've unwrapped them since, but I'm assuming they probably never wrapped their pipes because mine are still wrapped right now. So you have people doing that and their lines are bursting in their house, outside the house. So you got water leaks, the main water lines to some parts of um, surrounding areas within San Antonio were even freezing. So. You had the main line, I think it was out, oh, I forget which uh, which little part. But basically you had like the main water lines freezing. So then water's not getting through there. Electricity's not getting to the water pumps. So you have low water pressure. There's water boil alerts because now that you can have pathogens and stuff in the water and it's just crazy, like comp it just got out of control. Um, now you pair that up with long lines at the grocery stores and then any fast food places that were open had like two hour waits minimum um, on that first day because people didn't prepare. No one was told, hey, uh, power's gonna go out for almost a week. Make sure you have enough wa bottled water and uh, clean water and food. And so those people really suffered the most. Um, those with infants and those with elderly were really suffering. I mean, my grandpa, my mom was telling me that the power hadn't come back on. He's like shivering because he's so cold and he was in a lot of pain and, and discomfort. And my mom ended up taking him to the emergency room and I'm like, that's perfect because they, they have power, heat, he's going to be taken care of. It's probably the best place for him to be right now. Um, and then you have, you know, people just making mistakes, burning stuff inside their home and not realizing you know, about the carbon monoxide and um, getting sick or dying from that. And it's just, it's just a really horrible guys. Um, wouldn't wish it on anyone. And I, th I hope it, it just shows people like always be prepared for a few days minimum to maybe a week or two of making sure you have clean water, clean you know, uh, food that doesn't have to necessarily be cooked. Don't rely on yeah, your refrigerator. Like our, our power went out. So basically Tuesday it went out. Um, what was it? Tuesday, the, the same thing was happening. Power was going off and on. Um, it came on for a bit and then it went out. Basically Tuesday, it came on around 9 a.m and it stayed on we were really surprised okay cool so you know heat up the house a little bit um do what we need to do with with the electricity as we have it and then right around two o'clock it cut out so 2 2 30 p.m it went out they never came back on for our home um <clears throat> so wednesday we stayed in our house you know and tried to keep warm wednesday morning power still hadn't come on and uh, reached out to my uncle and i said hey if you have the space you know we're going to come over and stay with you because you have heat and power and water and like everything. Okay. So Tuesday we ended up, I'm sorry, Wednesday morning, late morning, we ended up going over to his place. Um, and the power didn't come back on here at this house until 
Thursday morning. Um, the crazy thing is, is like during that time, all of the food in the refrigerator like spoiled, even the ice, our freezer, it had melted. Um, so all that food I'm like having to get rid of. Um, luckily though, so check your insurance guys that are here in Texas because you might have with your homeowners or renters insurance, they may have a food spoilage uh, coverage, you know, no deductible, just call them up, tell them if your food went bad, how much estimate, whatever, and see if they'll take care of you. Um, I know my insurance company's doing that, which is great because the grocery stores are pretty much wiped out right now anyway, but maybe in a couple of days I can head out there and replace all the, the food that was lost. Um, yeah, it was nuts. <laughs> but the crazy thing for my, you know, you guys, my channel is that I had a whole bunch of content planned to record, edit, get ready and upload this week. And I wasn't able to do any of it. And, um, I had like even the Zanea watch, for example, I was going to do my full review on that, record it, had it all planned and wasn't able to. And so I'm just having to ship that watch out. So I'm going to try and just record it real quick and at least shoot everything I need and then ship it out tomorrow. Um, and FedEx and post office stuff should be, should be open and, and ready to go. Um, but yeah, I just want to give you guys an update. It was like, it was so much more than just a couple inches of snow or whatever. Um, it was really, it really goes to show you how lack of preparation, uh, things can get out of control so fast and people panic. And there was, I heard even Saturday night preparing for Sunday and Sunday afternoon, they weren't even spraying the roads with uh, salt or putting down gravel. They were pretty much expecting it to snow a little bit. And then, you know, it's gonna melt the next morning or afternoon and we'd be fine. And even places, employers were like, hey, you know what, we're just gonna close Monday, we'll see you Tuesday. And after the power and stuff, it's like, yeah, we're closed all week. Like, we don't know how long this is gonna go on for. <sighs> anyway, um, and the crazy thing about it, guys, is tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow or the next day, the high is like 70. <laughs> so it's like, you go through all this crazy stuff in a week, matter of a few days to a week, and then it's right back to normal. Texas weather, um, but I'm okay. My family's okay. Friends are okay. Everybody I kept in contact with was, was good. Um, more uncomfortable than anything, but most, you know, most of us made it through and survived. There, there were definitely those that weren't as lucky, and you know, heart goes out to them and their families. But um, yeah, lesson learned. <laughs> Have some way to heat your home, even if only for a few days, because you never know. All right. Well, thanks for checking it out. I, if you have questions and comments, drop them down below. I'm going to be actually I have a birthday party to go to and then some church stuff to handle. So I probably won't be doing any editing and recording today, but maybe tomorrow, Monday and have something out for you guys soon. But as always, I appreciate the support, all the love. Um, it really was nice to see the comments, even though I couldn't respond to all of them. <laughs> so I hope I got back to each and every one of you, but if not, I will. Oh yeah, wristwatch check. I know you guys are waiting for that. Actually, this is the Aglocer Themis watch. I have it on a blue crocodile leather strap. So yeah, this is a really nice regulator watch. Um, first one that I've ever owned and I just enjoy it, love it. So that's what I got on the wrist for you guys today. Drop me a comment if you have any questions or um, wanna chime in on what you think might've been part of the problem. If I missed anything, let us know. But as always, I'll look forward to seeing you guys at the next one. Until then, May the Schwartz be with you. Take care.